Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, players and punters, welcome to London Shot at the European Poker Tour. Finishing in Monte Carlo, where Europe's top poker player will take the crown. And to be honest, more importantly, the loot. This tour ticks in Barcelona, Paris, Dublin, Copenhagen, Vienna, and of course Monte Carlo as poker's version of the Iron Curtain descends over Europe. This weekend, all the top poker players are in London. Cosmopolitan thoroughfare, which leads from Marble Arch, is the Victoria Casino, where tonight's action will take place. Already inside are our commentators, John Duffy and Colin Murray. So let's find out who's hot, who's just surviving, and who's already crying into their warm beer. <sighs> Thanks very much for the build-up, Caroline, but I'm not happy. When I signed up to the European Poker Tour, you promised me the world. I live beside this casino. This is not Barcelona. It's raining outside. It's windy. Uh, I mean, but being in London means we get a massive lineup. This is the home of poker in Britain, after all. It's a huge field. Some of the best poker players in Europe have turned up. We've got a huge prize pool. I think something in the order of £500,000, so £200,000 to the winner. And, you know, here we are at the, the home of poker in London and probably one of the oldest venues, you know, card rooms in Europe. Of course, um, the Vic, the Grosvenor, it, 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 all these players come and play week in, week out here. But, but these are higher stakes. This isn't your friendly game of poker. This is a European poker tour. Let's see how we've been getting on today. Over 170 of Europe's high rollers are here, and a few have even crossed the Atlantic to add to the excitement. We've also got players who've won satellite events at PokerStars.com, and they're having a great time. Some of the brightest poker stars have turned up to this one. There's certainly enough cash to get Ali Shark as she's interested. Patrick Bruel is in tune for this one. And a WPT event winner, Surinda Sunar's here. Bill Gazes has made it across the pond to check out the European action. And there's a few familiar faces from Barcelona. The second leg of the European Poker Tour then. Barcelona's done and dusted. We're in London. Next it's Dublin, then Copenhagen. Then we're off to Doval in France. And then Majur will be happy to know we're heading to Vienna. Finally, the big one, the grand final of the PokerStars.tv European Poker Tour in Monte Carlo. It's going to be massive. But London is all we have to worry about right now. 170 players have battled their way down to just eight at this final table. Half a million pound prize money. All different sizes of stack. Starting with Bardal in seat one. He's doing quite well. A big online player. And look who's in seat two. The European heavyweight that is Marcel Lusk. In seat three, we've got John Faulkner. He's from England. Uh, he's a bit of an unknown quantity. We'll keep an eye on him. Doing quite well indeed. And Robert Cooper from England, another mysterious player in seat four. Hard talking and, as you'll see, hard playing as well. In seat five, George McKeever from Ireland. Now, he's been playing cards before cards were invented. Nice, happy guy. He should do quite well. And in seat six, Noah Boken from the Netherlands. Now, Marcel Lusk has been taking him under his wing, so to speak. It could bite him today. And John Shipley, here is your chip leader at the moment. He's seen many a final table. Will he be smiling towards the end? We'll see. Not if Jeff Deval from England has anything to say about it. But he'll have to get a bit of a move on. Million dollar poker winner John Duffy's with me. Who would you least like to play against at this final table? Well, there's a few of them there. I mean, Jeff Duval, I, you know, never a great fan of playing against him. Marcel and John Shipley are also incredibly capable players. You know, there, there, there's, some, there's a really difficult line up here. Well, whoever wins is going to have to hit some good hands. Here's how they work. This is the best hand. Ten to ace, suited and running. Below that, the straight flush. Again, suited and running. Doesn't have to be ten to ace and four of a kind. The numbers match four times. Below that, it's the full house. Three of one, two of the other, and the flush. All the same suit. The numbers don't have to run. This is more likely. You see a lot of these straight running five cards and below that three of a kind could be anything from twos to aces and two pair is exactly what it says we're getting down to the not so good hands one pair won't win too many hands today and the high card hopefully you'll fold it let's put the theory into practice and get some cards dealt john shipley is our chip leader 
at the moment. He takes a look at what he has. It's like a pair of threes. <laughs> yeah. And he makes a bet. A good pocket per then for a chip leader. Okay, so he's bet 18, he's raised at 18,000. So Charles. I raised 45,000. Oh, he's come, he's, okay, Charles playing his ace queen very aggressively. He's made it 45,000 to play. Even suited connectors being folded here, so a lot of good cards around this table. Yeah, well, there's, there's already 79,000, you know, in this pot. <laughs> I'm all in. And another ace came. We've got an all-in call made. He needs that as well, Robert Cooper. He's all in for th over 300,000 chips here, and he, he stands to pick up what 70,000 if everyone folds around him. Yeah, he's playing it very aggressively, which is you know, which is a thing to do. And he's done it. Shipley folds his pocket threes. Dal's ace queen is gone. And Cooper makes a nice tidy 70 grand without a card being dealt. <laughs> and he looks very happy about it too. Smug, some would say, John. Smug. <laughs> so here's the basics of poker. Each player gets two cards each. And there you roll. Then around the betting based on the blinds amount. And then we get the flop. That's our first three cards in the middle uh, out of five. Are you liking that? Are you not? Well, we're going to have another round of betting at this stage. Two players left in. We get the turn card. Does that change anything? In this case, the Queen of Hearts. More betting than the final card, the River. You do not want to get beaten on this one. One more round of betting than the best five-card hand you can make given the two in your hand and the five in the middle. In this case, it's a straight, which beats three of a kind. Let's get back to the table. Thank you, uh, Marcel Lewis, probably the best-known player at this final table and fine voice so far tonight, but he'll need some action. He's got the second lowest chip stack at the moment, 65 and a half thousand. And the subject matter seems to be women. <laughs> Hardly surprising with Marcel. Always very entertaining to have at the same table as you, Marcel. Very, he's a very, very good player. Loves to chat, loves to wind his opponent up. Well, he will not be entertaining much longer if he doesn't get some good cards, as he's a so short-stacked. In this case, he's looking at one bet to double up. OK, so Robert Cooper. Everybody's folded round to Robert Cooper, who's raised with the King-10. And not bad cards at all, knowing that five are folded in front of him, just the small bind and the big blind to make the decision. On that small blind then, George McKeever from Ireland, about 80,000 chips in front of him. Although John will correct me, he, he can count them from 100 miles away, so if, if I'm wrong, let me know, Dothy. I will. And with so little chips in front of him, uh, in relation to other players, he's going to like high-suited connectors. And he's raised all in. Oh, it's a good, it's a very good, it's a good move by uh, George. He's, you know, he's, he's only got 80,000. He needs to get busy. He knows he needs to get busy early on. These may be the best cards he sees for a while. See, ah, Robert's folded, so he wins the pot. Well played, George. Well played indeed. That makes Marcel Lusk then bottom of the chip count. He's every reason to raise his glasses. A couple of months ago, I would have won about $450,000, $500,000. A lot of people say, wow, he's great, he's fantastic. It could be a flip of a coin to be successful in a competition or you're out. It's not because you play bad. The cards just don't know. They don't have a memory. I don't want to be predictable in the game. This is a key to poker. If you're predictable, then it's no good. Marcel Lusk there, proving that poker means two things, profits and profits. More cards being dealt out. Lusk will need to get a move on. I won't be in this hand for much longer. Bottom of the chip stack at the moment. Everyone with more chance of getting their hands on that top prize than him at the moment. And a strange raise there, John. He hasn't got that many more chips other than the 48,000. Well, he's got, to, he's got to get busy, and he's got king-queen suited. So he's, he's, oops, and he's walked into pocket jacks. John Falcon has got pocket jacks. <laughs> well, let's hope that Marcel Lisk isn't listening to Alison Moyes all cried out. He won't be favourite to win this hand. 